Welcome to Dodgers Daily. Casey Porter here, joined by Coach Holt. So glad that you decided to tune in in a morning to where we are morning. That is correct. Of course, it is a long season, so you don't do a whole lot of that. And I can hear Coach Holt say as I bring him in, hey, guys, we, you know, we're not going to get negative with this. We're not going to point fingers. But something's got to change. I can hear Coach Holt's speech, speech right now. <laughs> well, there's no doubt about it. I mean, it's obvious something's got to change. You know, Case, before we went on the air, I just – Double check. I just saw the Cubs just swept the uh, Orioles. You know, yeah. you look at the power rankings. You know, you got uh, the Orioles up there in front of the Dodgers. You know, you get I guess the first, the highest ranked team. You know, then you got the Orioles second place, the Dodgers third. But Orioles just got swept by the Cubs. As you look down through the standings, all the best teams, quote unquote, in baseball are struggling right now. Yankees, Dodgers, Orioles are, are like three and seven. I mean. It's it's just that time of year, you know. I, I hate saying we, we always talk about the dog days of summer. People, that's what used to the old days is always the dog days of summer. Everybody's banged up a little bit, you know. And injuries just didn't a Dodger thing. I was lost to broadcast the other days. A lot of injuries going around the major leagues. The Dodgers have had their feel of them, you know, the last two years. You know, with with the whole rotation and losing some starters this year, and of course Mookie going down. You know, we we seem like we've had our feel because we're closer to that situation. But but it, it's a Pandemic going on all around, epidemic, not a pandemic, epidemic going all the way around Major League Baseball uh, of, of the injuries, you know. I don't even want to get into the arm injuries on pitchers case. You know where this old school guys go with that. We all – I'm not even going to start there. Maxing out on everything, Maxing even out. off-speed pitches. Yeah, 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 and everything, whatever. I won't even go, I won't even go back to when they're 12 and 13 years old, how much they were throwing. We won't even get into that. that that's a mm-hmm. whole other can of worms. But it's kind of a, a, an epidemic going on with, with injuries. And like I said, the best teams, the Dodgers, the Dodgers, the Yankees, the Orioles, I mean, everybody is just kind of – you know, are those teams not going to be there at the end of the year? You know, the Phillies yeah, are the highest right. ranked team. The Phillies are the number one team as far as power ratings. They earned it. They deserve yes. it. They're very good. Then it goes, then it goes into the, uh, you know, the Orioles and then the Dodgers. You know, the Yankees mm-hmm. have dropped down because they're, they're similar. They even had a losing streak before they went three and seven. They were having this, you know, they were going downhill. So does anybody really believe those teams aren't going to be there at the end? There's no right. way. There's no way. So, you know, everybody, this, 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 we all get it. They get it more than we do because they live it every day when they wake up. Mm-hmm. Uh, just try to survive. Get your guys back. Don't be do, do anything stupid. Keep your head above water. The Dodgers are being great at that. I mean, we're sitting here whining and moaning. They're seven games up. Thank God the Padres yes. have just gone four and six in their last ten. So, they're still a seven-game lead. So, the Dodgers have been the best. And the Dodgers have experience, Dave Robertson's staff, and the management system of, of how to handle this stuff. So, uh, no, it's 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 frustrating. Sit there and watch the Phillies. My brother-in-law, who's a great Tulsa Driller fan, over there. He's over there last night, sent me pictures, making me feel bad because I wasn't there. Uh, he's a big Phillies fan, so I had to listen to that, you know. So uh, that sort of yeah. thing. But they're 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 a really good team. I saw some people going losing their mind on the internet, like we all have, and and I, I don't care. I, that's fine because we're all fans, and we get upset saying you know how bad the Phillies are. Wait a minute, I guess you're not paying attention. <laughs> that's yeah. a really good team. Yeah, and, I keep hearing they haven't beaten anybody. So, yeah, that kind of deal. Yeah, that type of deal. They, they are a really good team. And, you know, Harper's been fighting injuries over there too. So, you know, it, it's just it's just the way it is. And uh, we don't like it. Nobody likes it. You know, sometimes the all-star break comes at the perfect time. Sure does. You know, and it's not we, – we know the all-stars, those guys don't really get too much of a rest. But the rest of the guys, they can go do – do go on vacation, whatever the heck they want to do, get away from baseball, go fish, go hunt, go – hang out with the wife and kids and, and, and do whatever. It Sometimes it hits just – it's kind of like summer break for us teachers, Case. Yeah. It, you know, sometimes summer break hits or fall or spring break, and you're like, ah, just I, – I, it's just Hit the right spot. time. So, you know, we're, we're hoping that's going to be the case for the Dodgers. But there's a lot of other teams in the same boat. Yeah. Let me, let me throw this at you, though, and see what you say here, okay? And, and I've complained for a long time the three true outcomes – of course, we are probably a little bit more old school than, than some than the way some people think. We yeah. we still like the bat to ball stuff. We still like hitting behind runners. Yep. Hey, we understand that you have to hit home runs to put crooked numbers on the board. Yep. We get all that. But we still think that actually execution in offensive baseball is how you win close games. It's how you become a really great team. It's how you become a cohesive unit and an offense that that isn't as up and down like the Dodgers are. Absolutely. So let me let me throw this at you. In games that the Dodgers have lost, they're 16th in the major leagues in walks. They're 28th in home runs hit, coach, and they actually have struck out 
64 more times in games they've won than in games they've lost, which tells you that they're way more aggressive because they're hitting more home runs in games they've won. So you talk about the three true outcomes, walks, they're walking a lot more, obviously, in games that they've won. They're hitting a ton more home runs. I mean, they're, they're all the way down to 28th in home runs in games they've lost. And then they're striking out more in games they've won. So, yes, I agree that it's dog days of summer. Yes, I agree teams go through this. But still at the same time, Coach, this is obviously the data, the underlying metrics, the numbers I just went over, tell you right there, this is an offense that can't function outside of the three true outcomes. See, that, that, that's a problem. See, then that's such a case that we've kind of kept on the back burner, we being me, I guess, thinking yep. we're getting away from that. Because in past years, that's been the Dodgers. You yes, know, they're, it's they're been this year. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. But we, you know, I know at early early part of the season, we're kind of like, well, you know, the top, you know, the lineup is outstanding. They shouldn't have those lulls and blah, blah, blah in there. But with, we're, we're kind of morphing back into the same thing, exactly what you just said, the up and down offense. You score five runs in Philly. You're not going to win very many series scoring five runs, especially against a team like that. Didn't hit very many home runs, obviously, at all. You know, so that's exactly goes into what you were just saying. You know, score five runs through a game series. There's not very many te- teams in the major league level that you're going to beat. You know, I mean, there's no such thing as bad major league. I don't care what their record may be bad, but they have major league players. And we, we forget about that. But you're right. We're we're morphing. I don't know if that's the right word. Maybe it was just wishful thinking on my part in the season, thinking Our, this lineup is so good, they shouldn't have to just rely on home runs. They shouldn't have to have those lulls in their offense because they got so many guys. But – Injuries have changed some of that. Some guys aren't hitting, you know, you know some guys are, are not coming around like we thought they would. You know, the, the, the constants have been T. Oscar. What a great pickup. You know, he's exactly what yeah. we thought he'd be. You know, and, and show Hayes. But he's still, still the, the three, kind of a lot of that three true outcome, too, though. No, you're right. right. Absolutely. But that's what he was before he came here. You yes. Know, that, that, we, we talked about he, that. But he adds we, to that. He doesn't, he doesn't help fix that. Does it make no, sense? No, that, no, you're absolutely right. He, he, when we talked about what, what we're getting when we got him, that's exactly yeah, what we're getting. Right. So you're, you're, you're correct. You're absolutely correct. So that that's 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 going to continue to be a problem, evidently. And, and you're still fighting the injuries, and you know, no, I I'm, I'm with you on that stuff. You know, yep. that, that that's you know, if you're not moving runners and, and you're relying on the big fly, you know, Earl Weaver tried it for years, but I don't know how many World Series he won. Not very many, but he was a great manager. But that's all he mm-hmm. won the three run homer. That's all he played for. So yeah, and I tell you, I mean, hey, the Mookie Betts deal is terrible. Yep, the Max Muncie deal is terrible. But, hey, I'm not asking this Dodgers team to be the same team with Mookie and with Max. But it has to be better than what it's been. I mean, I, it's – I okay, so whenever this season started, you and I had the conversation. Austin and I had the conversation. Coach Barakoff. I had the conversation with anybody who wanted to listen. I just thought the floor of this team was like, hey, they're never really going to go into extended slumps. We're yeah. never going to have a period to where you just watch it and it just doesn't look good, where you just – I just didn't think stretches like this were going to be a part of the the, the roster this, this team put together. So here's the deal. Not only have you lost Mookie Betts and Max Muncy, one of the best players in the game, a Hall of Famer at shortstop, and Max Muncy at left field. Coach, in essence, you might as well have put Gavin Lux, Chris Taylor, Kike Hernandez, all of these guys that just – James Altman. Yep. That were all the guys that were supposed to be – not necessarily James, but Gavin Lux was supposed to be a bat-to-ball guy. Yep. He was supposed to fix some of that three true outcome type of stuff. Miguel Rojas has done a really, really, really nice job of that. Yep. The Chris Taylor was supposed to give you – saying Kike was supposed to give you some professionalism in terms of quality of at-bats and, and grinding pitch counts. And so, not only have you had the two big injuries, you've also had, man, four or five guys that were supposed to, to create, a, you know, getting veterans. It's supposed to – you do that instead of rookies because they create a higher floor. You, you think, hey, they just can't sink real low like maybe a rookie could. You've lost them too. I mean, so, I mean, I've Gavin Lux had two hits and a home run last night. But it's just kind of been one of those deals to where there's been several different things that have gone into this. 
you know, it, it's a it's it's a, it's a whole like you said, it's a whole complex situation because uh-huh. as we talked in the preseason, it, exactly what you just said, we knew the top, the, you know, one through six, really going to be you know as good as anybody's, you mm-hmm. know, and we felt like you know Lux was always was a good offense, always been a good offensive player so in the early in his young MLB career, you know, and yeah. you just figure Chris Taylor, you know, and, and Kike since they've been around for a while, that you know, but they're. So, you know, they're down from what they've normally produced, all three of them. You know, it comes down to it. So that, that throws a, a kink in the arm, as we were talking about, too. You know, Lux is showing signs of, of getting, you know, he, he's gradually pulling his, his average up gradually. But, you know, we, we need him, you know, now we need him to come a little quicker. Not fast you know, enough. Not I think, fast I think enough. he's in danger, man. Yeah, he's, he's coming, but not fast enough. That's a good way of putting it. And, uh, you know, God, we, Kike, you know, yeah. and Chris Tutter, you love those guys. Those those guys are invaluable. He can't yep. even a pitcher now. I mean, he can play all nine <laughs> positions. They can both play all nine positions. They're so valuable and they're good defensively. But it what if there's the trade off? You're really getting not anything out of them offensively in, yep. in those three at this point. And and that 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 through, you know when we while we talked about early looking at the whole the whole the whole lineup. I agreed with you. I don't see how this yep. team will ever go into extended slumps, but what you just said has led to what we're seeing and, and some struggles in the up and down the offense and that sort of thing. And just hope it comes back around like, like, like we envision it. Well, the up and down is the top of your lineup. Mookie Betts is out. Will yeah. Smith has been struggling uh, basically for the last two, three, two to three weeks. Freddie Freeman has not been the Freddie Freeman we've become accustomed to in the last couple of weeks. Joey Otani. He's been okay, like in the 275-ish mark. But, you know, for a DH, here's the thing about Otani. For a DH that doesn't impact the game in any other way other than offensively, a guy like Otani, if he's hitting like 275 and not hitting a whole bunch of home runs, that's not a whole big impact for a, a major league team overall. No, and that's not why you. that's not what he was brought in to do. You know, he, like you said, being a DH – all he's come, I know he's you know I know he's rehabbing his arm and he does that sort of thing. But yeah. when the game starts, you got one job. You know, you got one. I don't want to put it that simple. But you have yeah, one, one way to impact the game. But you're impacting the game with your bat. Whatever you have to do to do it, and and he's so amazing in in his skill set to steal bases. He may be the first 50, 30 guy. You know, thirty fifty yeah. whatever they call it, fifty home runs, thirty st- steals. Ever, you know, there's a good chance that, but whatever, yeah. he's going to have to pick He's having that up an amazing too. year. He's yes. having an amazing. This is we're just strictly talking about in, the, in these periods to where you know these one week, two week periods. No, know? absolutely, and and it's the, the bad parts is it's all happening at the same time. Yeah, and right. That, that's right. That's where you get. You know, like I said before, we never. I never really felt like that was going to happen. You know, I if, didn't. If, if everybody, you know, we got some guys that are slumping. You got too many good hitters in there for them all to yeah, slump at the same right. time. But like you said, kind of, kind of, they are all slumped at the same time. Be honest with yeah, you. yeah. I tell you what, Coach, Landon Knack's performance last night just goes to show how good, honestly, Dave Roberts is at when to pull pitchers most of the time. Now, hey. The most un- – Gary Ward, you talk about Gary Ward all the time. I used to talk to you. Yep. I talked to Gary Ward one day, and he said, hey, man, the one thing that no coach knows how to do is to figure out when to take out their pitcher. Yep. There is no scientific formula to when to take this guy out, which guy to bring in, when to take him out. I mean, the, literally, if you talk to every fan base, the one of the biggest complaints is, oh, our, our manager doesn't know how to handle a staff. He doesn't know when to put a guy in or when to take him out. The Dodgers get this right. And, I, t- I mean, I, I look at the underlying, the, the, the things that go into taking a guy out last night. So let's go over Landon Knack for a second. Let me explain this just for a minute. So he comes into the game. Bonda was the opener. Landon Knack comes in. And he's greeted immediately by Marsh with a home run. Like, hey, welcome to Philadelphia, kid, to, to Landon Knack. Okay, and that was on a four-seam fastball. I talked last time that there's a better version of Landon Knack out there because I think he can pitch backwards at a much higher professional quality. For the most part last night, Coach Landon Knack was just simply fantastic at flipping the ball in, stealing strikes early in the count, and then – allowing his four seem to be effective because he was pitching backwards. So let me go through this. Third inning, he started he pitched. He started by pitching backwards to Stott and Marsh. 
He got ahead of Castellanos with a fastball, but that was the only fastball he saw. So it's obvious he was showing his fastball, but it was being played off of his breaking ball. Fourth inning, he got ahead of Rojas and Schwarber with his fastball, but again, that was the only fastball they saw. Then he pitched Stubbs backwards. Fifth inning, he pitched backwards to all three hitters. Sixth inning, he pitched backwards to Castellanos, Marsh, and Rojas, and they all three got hits. So now he's pitching backwards in the sixth inning. All three got hits. Guess what happens? He gets taken out. And he got taken out at the exact moment to where Pryor and Roberts were like, this dude has to pick back, pitch backwards to this lineup. They're starting to understand that. They're jumping on his off speed early in the count. Got to go. I mean, they could not have pulled Landon Knack at a better time. It's just – it's amazing to me how right they were on this. No, no. <clears throat> We've talked about this the last two years. I mean, I totally agree with you. What, the way they've handled pitching staff because they've been throwing a bag of you-know-what last year. Yes. Everybody getting hurt this year. And, it's, and like you said, in high school, it, it's great to be sent over calling pitch as a high school coach when your guys getting people out working backwards because you know you can call anything. You've sure. been there. I've been there. You're just like, oh. It's hard to do, though. Yeah, it's hard to do because it, <laughs> it happens very seldom that you have somebody that has success doing that. When you do scrape it like that, they know what his success pattern is against that team. As soon as they start, okay, they're hit, they're they're getting on. Yeah, you have to pull them, and that's great awareness of, of, of your staff, awareness of your pitcher. I'm like I'm like you, Casey. Well, I pull the pitcher most of the time on field. I mean, you could tell me my pitching coach could tell me what the pitch count is. Sometimes they're at forty, and it's like they're losing already. Well, I feel like they're losing. I'm, you know, I mean, I it's not a it's not a science to that. I, I went on the field most time. Usually I walked to the mound, I knew if they were coming or staying. Nobody you knew the kid. Going, You're like, hmm. going, yeah, I knew my kid. I knew, it, knew if he could go deep, if he couldn't. But that's you also knew job. what you had or didn't have to Absolutely. bring in, too. <laughs> yeah, what, what have I got behind him? I might need some more out of him. No, it's, <laughs> yeah. it's the same in the high school level. So that's yeah. what they're dealing with. And in their case, they're, they're having to bring guys up for the minor leagues just to, to, to fill in, like Robo and some of those guys. You know, they're, they're having to bring some guys. But they had to do it last year. You know, mm-hmm. in big situations, when Great. it was a, when it was a t- two game lead, not a seven. You know, when it was a half game lead, they had those guys coming up from minor league. So they they, they you know, and Roberts, I think I don't know. If he said it, a lot of people say, "Hey, you don't win the World Series this year, she's going to be fired." Whatever, that's not my decision. I personally don't think that's right. But you know, that's I'm a coach talking about a coach, so I don't think that's correct. But maybe it is. I don't know everything, but to ever rip him on how he handles a pitching staff, him and Pryor, there, there's nothing there. They, they've been great at how they've handled pitching staff. The pitching has not been a, a major issue this year, and, and it very well could have been the last two years Absolutely. with what they were dealing with. And it hasn't been, so that's awesome. 100%. Yep. 100%. And like I said, it's an easy target because yep. every time you criticize a manager or pitching coach on moves, it's always with hindsight. And then – you, so you criticize them using hindsight, but then you never use the hindsight, which is kind of what I'm wanting to do here, and I try to do it as much as I can to show Dodgers fans that, you know, it's kind of like when I, whenever I, I break down the Oklahoma State football games on my O State Daily site, and I show each play that each team runs, and I like to show the Oklahoma State fans that, hey, these other teams are only running the same five plays too. It's not just OSU. This is like – what everybody does. So I just think it's very important for, for Dodgers fans actually to see the sequences, how they were working Landon Knack last night. Yep. I have a little bit of insight into it because I've been watching Landon Knack all the way back to East Tennessee State. I've talked to him about his mix, his approach. So I know what to look for and know what to see. The, the Dodgers maximized what Landon Knack can do at a major league level. For the most part, he executed great, especially after getting ambushed early. Then they got him out at the perfect time. I mean, you talk about, yeah, hey, you're losing, none of this. That's but that so whenever you're winning or losing, you gotta look at the games inside the games. And so that game inside the game right there I thought was very positive for Landon Knack. I thought it was very positive as far as yes, you're losing some gains, but you can trust this part of the evaluation system and those kinds of things. Well, Knack gave you a chance to win that game. We, yeah. we, we, we've been in that situation before, Case. We said, we, you know, after a game, we've said, we don't win that game without that guy coming in and stabilizing the game on the mound. 
you know, he, he did that. Now, the Dodgers didn't win. He did. But, but you know, you're one big fly away from going, hey, Landon Nat got the win. Boy, that's a great relief job. But since we you're lost. You're just any kind of decent yeah. offense away from that. Absolutely. And he, but he gave you that chance because he came in early and, and you're in the ball game the entire way. You know, with that, especially the lineup the Dodgers have. They're one swing away You know, in a lot of situations, like a lot of major league teams are. So, that's no, that's – that, that's something you, you can't take for granted. That's great for him to know, know he, he did what he's supposed to do as manager, you know, trusted him up to a certain point when he knew he needed to come out. But he gave you a chance to win the ball game, you know, he did. A, a chance to get the sweat there. And he comes in, you know, and he gives you that chance. That's all you want out of a kid, especially a young mm-hmm. kid who doesn't have the experience. That, show, that, that speaks volumes like we talked about last year with Stone, all those guys that come up, that not, you know, they come in in a crucial situation as tight and improved themselves. Not, mm-hmm. It wasn't always pretty and it wasn't always good, but they, they, they gave you that chance for the Dodgers to get and in, in, eventually increase that lead till they got some guys back. And you're seeing the same thing now. Some guys come in. I know Robleski, you know, he threw all right. They gave up a couple of big flies to I hated security. the second home run. Yeah. The second. Throw, yeah. the, throw, the, throw the two seam that moves in on the lefty. Don't slide it away from yeah. the lefty. Yeah. And then don't give up the home run to the, to the nine hole who never hits home runs. That part of it was fuel to the fire. Sure, yeah, absolutely. But you know, that's also the first time a kid stepped on a mound in a major absolutely. league. Absolutely. And uh, and we know what he's made of. You know, we know oh, the type yeah. of kid he is. <laughs> and you know, we know him all the way back to Oklahoma State. So, uh, you know, that that's that's some good. Didn't win the game, but you know, you, you, you got to take some positive away from that. Uh, you know, say a couple of pitches got him. You know, got him knocked out. You know, get right down to it. Yeah. So, so that's not a bad thing. So and it's mm-hmm. been masterful what Pryor and Roberts. And, and, and the, the training really staff, happened. whoever their training guy is, their strength conditioning guy, it goes. There's a lot of people involved in this stuff, and they're all doing great jobs. Considering the Dodgers are, are dealing what they're dealing with, and still got a seven game lead, there's a mm-hmm. lot of people involved in that that, that, there we, is. that we don't even know who they are. Oh yeah, we don't see them, but they're doing it. Yeah. Well, I mentioned a couple of them yesterday. I actually got to talk to Jamie Wright at Tulsa on Tuesday. You remember Jamie yep. from Westmore, Westmore. Coach had, yep. had a heck of a time trying to beat him. When <laughs> he was really good there in the yep. in the early nineties. He's roaming around and working with the top pitching prospects. I'm assuming he's going to spend a lot of time in Oklahoma City with Bobby Miller, Rob Hill, the minor league pitching coordinator, is going to be in Oklahoma City with Bobby Miller. So yeah, you are 100 percent correct that there's a lot that goes into this. So. Dead last in all of ERA so far in July, 704. Dead last in whip so far in July as a pitching staff at 160 and have given up the most amount of earned runs, 61 earned runs so far in July. None of that is good, but I think we kind of went through the process. And then also I covered yesterday that I think the Dodgers really need to be aggressive to go get Garrett Crochet. I think he's out there for the taking. But let's move on to my next topic here, Coach, and we're going to touch this just kind of lightly. Shohei Otani brings a circus with him. I mean, he brings the entire world. He, yep. I don't mean that anything negative towards him, Coach. He's a wonderful human being. He produces. He's going to be a Hall of Fame player. He's having just a ridiculously awesome season. So he's holding up every end of his bargain. I don't mean it from that perspective. Yeah. But is there any kind of – unintended fallout to where like the rest of your players are in such a circus and in such a fishbowl and and just kind of a microscope that it actually affects everything around them in a negative way am i am i looking too much into that no i think i think you're on to something there but i'll put it this way i would be really disappointed the dodgers didn't have great leadership the clubhouse which i know that we know they do just look at the guys they got in there great leadership and some guys who can I'll put it this way. If Shohei was a jerk, to use a nice term, you know, you know, it's all about me, me, and, you know, you know, here's my entourage and blah, blah, blah. It probably would create a big problem. I, I don't think there's any doubt about it. But I, I don't, you know, that's coming with him. It's, he almost comes across a guy who don't really want it to come with he him. Does, I agree. But, I agree, Coach. But it's coming with him. So I, I think his, his teammates are probably That's going why to, I say it's not his fault. No, his teammates are probably – I think they're more in the mode of maybe trying to help him, protect him no, a little bit. I agree. You know, hey, he's our guy. You know, he, yep. he, I love that dude. He's one of, he's one of us. and do, But they'd do the same thing for uh, for Freddie or, or any of the other guys. They would do the same thing if somebody – they're going to circle the wagons. You know, they're really circling the wagons now, you know, to use the term. You know, mm-hmm. they're going to try to take care of each I, – I don't – that's a thing, and I think that has probably has been a thing with some teams. I, there's no doubt about it. 
in, in history of sports, we've seen that circus affect an entire team. I'd be really shocked if it affects the Dodgers just because of the leadership and the type of person Shohei is. The guys look mm-hmm. at him in a certain way rather than the, than the prima donna. You know, they're mm-hmm. going to look at that guy. This is exactly what he is. And we've seen that in history of sports. But my opinion, I don't think that that will – be a major issue. I'm sure it is on certain days. Mm-hmm. They're not feeling good, and there's a bunch of guys in there don't need to be in there. I can see somebody say, "Get out of here!" You know what I mean? Yeah, <laughs> that's human nature. Yeah, and and, and honestly, that's leadership. Yep. You know, hey, hey yep. leave him alone. Leave the guy alone. He, he's tired. You know, get out of here. You know, whatever. I just know, like every, and I didn't ask this question on purpose. I just know, like every time one of the Dodgers non Otani. What was I interviewed like every single interview for like a month was yep. hey where were you at when you found out that Shohei Otani got signed hey what's it like being teammates with Show I mean it just it's just yeah. th- that part of it I mean th- that's been re- but I'll, but I'll say this to that don't play for the Dodgers then go play yeah. for the Marlins yeah. <laughs> if yeah. you don't want that kind of scrutiny that kind of fishbowl and that kind of limelight it's great when you're winning man you can't like the winning and then not like you know I mean so go play for a team that doesn't give you that if that's what you want well, it's like, well you live, go play for the New York Yankees good lord yeah. what do you think those right. guys are going through you know I mean they're struggling right now I mean I would like being Aaron Judge you know what I mean you know you know, one of the greatest players on, on the face of the earth right now. I mean, and it's one of the great, the, the, you know, number one organization in baseball as far as world championships. I mean, bar none. I mean, imagine those guys struggling too. And, yeah. and the New York press is a heck of a lot tougher than the L.A. press. I know all the big city press guys have a job to do, and I used to be one of those guys. I do get tired of what you mentioned a while ago, keep asking the stupid questions. Quit yeah. asking a guy about Shohei. Hey, yeah. you having Lux, how do you, how do you rehab? How's your knee? Don't ask him about Shohei. You know, how, yeah. how are you doing? How are you Absolutely. doing your comeback? I you know, totally and, agree. And I, used to be, I can speak from experience. I used to be a Me too. small town. You did too, small town journalist. And don't ask stupid questions. I'll, just, I'll, I'll leave it real simple. Don't ask stupid questions. Yeah. Uh, you don't want to be that guy to when you come around, like every, all the players like go the other way. They're like, yeah. oh, I don't want to get caught that, by this guy. It's called getting out. caught. <laughs> you know all about it, <laughs> don't you? That trying to hide from you. you yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I don't want to get caught. I don't by want that to be guy. that guy. I don't yeah. want to be that guy. I don't either. Okay, so last topic here for me, Coach, and we're both excited about this. Got to go to to Tulsa Tuesday and talk to Henny. By the way, and we had a good conversation uh, about you him. for a couple of minutes. He said he lost fifty pounds, but he's he gained good. twenty back, which which is great because he looks absolutely fantastic. Yep. Last night went to actually two nights ago went to Oklahoma City. Got to talk to Alan Trejo. Young man, the Dodgers just picked up, got to talk to Trey Sweeney. Trejo's interview is coming out at noon today. And then Sweeney's is going to come out, I believe, tomorrow. And then I also went back last night, got to talk to Joe Kelly, which Saw was that. super – like, I didn't even know he was in Oklahoma City, and he just walked by. I was like, that's freaking Joe Kelly. I said, hey, Joe, I'm sure you don't want to talk to some dude in the middle of Oklahoma, but got a minute to – he's like, oh, sure. Abs- I mean, like the coolest guy of all time. Talked about his skateboarding and the 2020 Our championship, skater, dude, I love it, yeah, dude. and all that. And then, and then, uh, also got to talk to Diego Cartaya. What a wonderful young man! So I'm going to release that interview this weekend. And I know we're both super excited, Coach. I'm going back Sunday to talk to Jesse Hahn, which I'm excited about because he has a lot of major league experience and he's really good. But Saturday, we're both going to see Clayton Kershaw pitch in OKC. So pumped about that. I am too. I'm just excited. Uh, my brother-in-law's is funny. That they saw him pitch in Tulsa. Matter of fact, they're coming. Him and his buddy are coming because I, I told him we were going Saturday night, and and they they watched uh, most probably all the uh, Oklahoma City kids come up through Tulsa, so they know oh, yeah. they, they're big time fans. And they say, "Hey, we saw him pitch in Tulsa. Did you go watch him pitch in Oklahoma City?" But yeah, I'm excited about to, just seeing him. I know the Oklahoma City fans are. You're looking at a Hall of Famer. You know, a very respected person in the history of Major League Baseball, not just the Dodgers. So I'm really excited about. It. I was thinking after I saw your interview with Joe Kelly, that was awesome. What a great dude, a skater guy. Yeah, my audio I device was I didn't have it set up, so I was like, I'll just use the camera audio. Here we go. So there was some wind noise too, but that's all right. Yeah, that's fine. But he, uh, but the only way it can be perfect is he uh, pitches. And then Joe, come, I know he's pitching two out of three days. Maybe Joe comes in on the back end of that one too. So yeah. that'd be pretty nice. So. I'm, we're excited about it. Me and my wife going to go down. I'll, I'll holler at you and buy a Dodger dog. Have a Dodger yeah, dog absolutely. with you or something. Going to be a heck of a lot of fun. And I, I absolutely can't wait. Going to go early and get all the video and all that. So, a lot of fun. Hey, Coach, we've covered a lot of different topics. I think, you know, you're always my therapist with these kinds of things. We try not to get too dark. We try sure. to, to have a positive big picture 
uh, perspective to it, but also covering all the. I mean, you can't just say, "Hey, everything's fine. Right. We're good. No big deal." It's, it's a, you can't. You've also got to cover all the things that are going wrong and have the tough conversations about them. So I feel like we did that today. I feel a lot better. I don't know about you, but but I, hey, I'm ready to go play right now, right? You always do that to me, Coach. <laughs> I'm always ready to go play. You know, I'm too old to play, but I'm ready to go play. You know what I'm going to do instead? In about 30 minutes, I'm going to jump in the truck and go see my grandson. Brand new oh, granddad. my gosh. He's, he's How about, about that? Your granddaddy. Yeah, he's about 10 days old, and I'm going to take wow. my mom down. She's 97. I'm going to take her down and see her great-grandson. Is she still beautiful? Yes, yeah, she is. Case She looks like she's 27. Yeah, she, she's, right. she's amazing. So we're I'm excited about that, I'm excited about the Dodgers, excited about Kershaw coming to town. And, and I can't wait. So, yeah, things are good right here at our house. Life is good. Tell you that, man. Life is good, and go Dodgers. Seven game lead in the yep. NL West. Yep. Love you, coach. You came in. Love you too, man. I'll see you.